shoot or the night before the first day of shooting Waikina which means I need to pack my bags because it's an up north trip we're shooting pretty much out in the wop wops no wi-fi I'm taking my drone and my camera I'm so bad at packing bags I think that's everything but also be like ten dollars I've definitely forgot something I'm just not good at packing I don't get how people are good at this my mum Great at this. My girlfriend, great at this. Me, bad at this. I don't know what I need. I don't know how to look out for myself. I'm not an adult. I'm a child. I'm just trying to figure this out. I mean, if I could, I'd just take some toys and a fruit roll up. Fun fact there used to be a sculpture there till someone broke it. <laughs> Hilarious. Now, instead of me trying to explain the film to you and probably ruining it, I'll let the film's writer and director do that. Well, my name's Sophia Robertson, and I am the writer and director of Waikino. Waikino is about a detective from a small coastal community who's returned back to her hometown after living and working in the city for a while to try and take a break from her work and uh, she discovers evidence of a crime scene on the beach and she pursues this and uncovers a lot of uh, dark secrets about her past and about the town. Okay. I thought you were off work. Look, I'll tell you what, if you're going to interrogate me, might as well do it tonight at the pub. No, it'll be good to properly catch up. It would. It would. I remember we talked about some of the roadblocks that we had on day one. Do you want to run me through what some of those were? Okay, yeah. Well, our morning, we got everything all set from, like, packing point of view. We were so ready to go on time. Um, we had roadblocks with booking gear. There were problems with uh, scheduling with other groups who arrived a bit later. That was stressing me out quite a bit. Um, then, yeah, we came, we picked up all our actors and our car promptly decided to, um, die. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the van. After a few minor setbacks, we were on our way. I wanted to break down about two minutes later, just up the road. But after a bit of Kiwi ingenuity, we were back on the road. Cruising up the North Island in a beat up old van, just like Peter Jackson did when he first started making films. I'm not even making that up. This is actually Peter Jackson's first car. Stopping along the way for supplies, and also chilling out with this guy for a bit. Then meeting up with our drone pilot to get shots of our lead actress driving angrily. After a safety briefing, of course, which is generally someone telling you just not to stand on the road, then we got started. FYI, this is Paul. He's our drone pilot. He flew drones in Papua New Guinea and made documentaries about the local tribes. And he drives a motorbike. He's pretty cool. The location, how did you choose that that space? I know Matakona, that's been my beach as a child. And sort of we went out there every summer and we'd camp out there. Just intense and just roughing it. And Matakona's a very rough beach. It's, it's either like scorching and you cannot escape sunburn or it's like blowing a gale and your tent's going to end up in, in the hills and it really gets across that sort of the sort of gritty wild nature that we needed for the film and I'm really glad we did manage to get somewhere in Matakona. So this is where we're staying this is the set and where we're sleeping it's an old shearing shed that I'm pretty sure is still a shearing shed uh, but you can sleep here it stinks.
<laughs> okay, I need the manual. Second and last day of shooting for me on the on the film. And we have a call time of 8 a.m. because we shot a little bit late last night. We had a few technical difficulties, but eventually we figured it out. Something to do with our frame rate was wrong, and then the electricity wasn't providing enough power to the lights that they were flaring at different speeds, and then our resolution wasn't right, wasn't matching the drone stuff or whatever. It's actually pretty cool. Last night we did my driving scene, my, my speed driving scene, where I get to hoon in and my, my Honda Odyssey that my character drives, um, and slam on my brakes and be all heroic and everything, and then something happens. And then we shot the confrontation last night between myself and Stacy, who's the actress that plays our lead, Victoria. The cool thing about that is I've actually been in about two or three films with Stacy before but never in the same scene. So it's quite nice. I actually think in one film, in one film I was trying to murder her husband. So it's nice to, nice to be in the same scene and actually speak face to face. <laughs> what was it like working with your dad? Um, that was, that actually went a lot better than I thought it would. <laughs> He's acted for me before in several different films, but um, it's very different to sort of the roles that he's had to play in the past. It's very different from him as a person. He's, yeah, very super approachable, super friendly. And this sort of Gavin as a character is very awkward and very sort of reserved and sort of eccentric and strange. This water! You've cursed it! Can't you hear it calling? What happened out of that boat? Here we are. Those are all my scenes. Well done. They've got another two or three days left of shooting up there and then we're moving back down to Castle Point and shoot a little bit more. But for me, my visual stuff is all done. I'll meet up with Sophia and the team back in Wellington in a few days and shoot the rest of my ADR, uh, which is the voiceover stuff I need to do for phone calls. Uh, but yeah, that won't be for a little while, so for now I'll just head back into town, wait for the call, and then I'll just go scream in a booth. So yeah, thanks for watching. As always, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos of me. I'll be just making a dick of myself. Cheers.